In this video, I'm going to show you how to make your backgrounds in your bird photography blurry. We're going to go from this to this to even more blurry. Oh, and I'll show you the most common mistake that people make when trying to blur their background. And we're going to do this in only five minutes. So make sure you subscribe and let's dive into the tutorial. So here we have the image that we'll be editing. Now, as you can see, I just dropped it in. So it is here a smart layer. So what I'm going to do is simply highlight the whole image and I'll just do Command C and Command Shift V to paste it in the same spot. It's the same image, I just have a duplicate of it. This one here will be the foreground and this one here will be the background. And what I'm going to want to do is open up the Properties panel. So if you're not seeing this here, what you're going to do is click on Window and then click on Properties here. And then you're going to click on Remove Background. Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. So it did a terrible job. It's all right, it, it wasn't a great job. So if it turns out good, then you can just use that and that will save you a bit of time. If it doesn't turn out that great, then what you can do is the old fashioned way by using this here, the pen tool. So the pen tool will take a bit of extra work, but you will get the best result typically. So what you're going to simply do is draw here and use the pen tool. Now, if you haven't used the pen tool before, it does take a bit of work getting used to, but it is a, a very accurate tool to use. So you could use the lasso tool instead, but the lines just won't be as smooth as, as you get by using the pen tool. Once you've drawn around the object, you want to make sure that you click on the starting point again, and now you've made your selection. Now what you're going to do is right click, and here you're going to click on make selection. So I'll click on that, and here you can select the feather radius. Now let's just do one for this. So the radius will mean how textured the edge is, so is it really clean? If you just want perfectly cut, then you'll do zero pixels, or if you just want like a bit of blur on the outside to make it a bit more realistic, then you might do one pixel or two pixels. And then I'll click on OK. So as you can see, I've now made the selection. Now on the layers panel here, I'm going to click on this icon here. This is going to create a layer mask. So I'll do that, and now you can see it is perfectly cut out. Now what we're going to do is make the background visible again. I'll show you the mistake that most people make. They'll go to filter and do blur and then do Gaussian blur. As you can see, no matter how much blur I add, I have this kind of weird halo glowing effect here. And to make this look realistic, we do want to avoid that. So what we're going to do here is just hide this foreground, and now we're going to be working with the background layer. What we want to do here is actually hide this bird here. So whatever's in the foreground, we want to hide it here in the background. Now, this is going to be pretty easy with Photoshop nowadays. What you're going to do is hold down Command and click on the foreground select. So this select here that we have. And here you're going to click on the taskbar. So I'll click on that. And here we're just going to do generative fill and I'm just going to click on generate. And as you can see, it does a pretty good job. Now what I'm going to do is combine the generative fill and the background layer together. So I'm going to hold shift and select both of them. I'm going to right click and I'm going to click on Merge Layers. So I've just merged these, and again, I'll call this Background. Now what I'm going to do here is just clean up the small stuff that it might have missed, like this. So I'm using this tool here, the Spot Healing Brush, and it's just the small stuff that it might have missed. It was actually only those two dots there. So now I have the background, and I have the foreground here, and I can now move this foreground around here. So these two layers are now separated. So now what I want to do, I'll actually just duplicate this so I have another one. So now this background, I'll just add the foreground back in. Now this background, I am going to want to add the blur to it. So what I'll do is actually convert it to a smart object, this background that I'm going to blur, just in case I ever want to make any changes to it. So I'll do filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. And now as you can see, if I add that blur to it, it doesn't have that weird glowing effect like it used to. So this background blur now just looks a lot better. And you can add as much or little to it as you want. Now because this foreground and the background here are separate layers, I can edit those separately. Now if you don't think this background is still blurry enough, what you can do is click on filter and go blur. And instead of doing the Gaussian blur, you can do a box blur. And here, as you can see, it makes it very, very blurry and you can get this really clean look. So I'll just do this, maybe around there. That's how you get that really blurry background. If you found this useful, please subscribe and check out this video here where I show you how to remove motion blur from your bird photography. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.